To reduce the chance of unauthorized access to your data in Salesforce, you can set security requirements for your users. Your first line of defense is password policies. You can set them for the whole org or set different policies for groups of users using profiles. Password policies set on a profile override what's set at the org level. If none are specified on a profile, org settings apply. Follow these general best practices for effective passwords. Change passwords often. Require users to reset their password every 90 days or more frequently. Require unique passwords. Remind users not to reuse passwords on multiple accounts in case one or more of those accounts is compromised. Longer passwords are better. We recommend requiring a minimum length of 10 characters or greater. Make passwords harder to crack. This involves requiring a mix of letters and numbers in passwords. Never share passwords. Remind your users to never share a password, including their Salesforce password, with anyone, either online or in person. Let's go into my org and take a look at the different password policies that you can set. Starting in Setup, I'm going to use the Quick Find on the left-hand menu to search for password policies. Here I'll see a list of the various password policies that I can set, including how often user passwords expire, the password history enforced, meaning can users use a recent password when they're resetting their password, the minimum password length and complexity, having to do with letters, numbers, even special characters. The password question requirement sets restrictions on a password hint answer. I can also set the maximum number of invalid login attempts that they get before they get locked out. This means how many times can they get their password wrong before we lock them out of the system. Related to that, I can also set the lockout effective period. Right now it's set to 15 minutes, which means if they exceed the maximum number of invalid attempts, there's 15 minutes where they won't be able to log in unless reset by an admin. I have different increments I can set, or I can set it to forever meaning an admin needs to reset this. A few other options you'll see at the bottom. Obscure secret answer has to do with when users are typing in the answer to their question when resetting a password. Requiring a minimum one day password lifetime means users aren't permitted to change their password more than once in any 24 hour period. The last setting asks if an app can use an API to change a user's password. Your own password settings for your org are likely not set in a vacuum. Work with stakeholders to determine your security settings and best password policies for your security needs. Next, let's see how the login process works. As a default, there are no restrictions on hours or locations of login. When a user successfully logs into Salesforce, Salesforce places a cookie in their browser. This is used to recognize that browser for future logins. As a user starts the login process, Salesforce looks to see if they've logged in from this browser before. If they haven't, a user must activate that computer. When prompted to activate, Salesforce selects the highest priority method available to verify their identity like this text message. The verification code can also be delivered via email or a mobile authenticator app. Identity confirmation is that extra layer of security to verify the user's identity. Once the user verifies, the device and the client browser is considered activated. On the identity verification page, don't ask again is checked by default. If you're ever logging in from a device that is not your own, always deselect this option so identity verification remains required. Setting trusted IP ranges allows users to bypass the activation step. For example, 
maybe users don't need to verify when they're logging in from the office. Next, in setup, we'll take a look at the ability to set trusted IP ranges for your org. This time, using the quick find on the left-hand side, I'm going to search for network access. Here I can click new to set a trusted IP range. I can set the start IP, the end IP, and when users log in from within this range I specify, that means they won't have to go through the activation process where they verify their identity. If they log in from outside of the range or if they clear cookies on their browser, it doesn't prevent them from logging in, they just have to go through that verification process. You can also view activations, a list of the login IP addresses and client browser information on devices from which users have verified their identity. From here, admins could revoke browser activation for one, many, or all users. Last, let's go back into my org and take a look at our activations. This time, using Quick Find on the left-hand side, I'll search for Activations. If I click on Activations, I can view the username, the login IP, created date, whether they're authenticated, and the challenge completion date. If I wanted to remove access, I could select one of these options and click Remove. Salesforce provides out-of-the-box features that help you keep your data secure. Use password policies, trusted IP ranges, identity verification, and activation tracking to control access to your org.